Hello grade 10s, in this video we'll be doing mechanics, equations of motion, past paper, exam question, let's go. Remember if you miss any of my other papers or exam question videos, please check out the links in the description box below. So these will be the questions that we'll be answering today. Let's read through the question very carefully first. In the diagram below, a robot, which is a traffic light, as we know in South Africa, and a signboard are 500 meters apart. Two cars A and B both pass the robot at the same time. Car A takes off from rest. As soon as they say things like this, these key words, we know from rest means that my initial velocity is zero at the robot. That's when the car's at rest and accelerates at 1.2 meters per second squared. This is acceleration, okay? So we are saying that this car is going to travel to the right towards the signboard. Let's take that direction or east. Yeah, they speak about an easterly direction. That's my positive direction, east. And the car is accelerating. It's speeding up in the positive direction. So acceleration is positive. Remember, as soon as you see this, to the power of negative two, you know it's acceleration. To the power of negative one, you know it's velocity. It says that car B, on the other hand, we're contrasting the cars, travels at a constant velocity of 27,78 meters per second. So if you have a constant velocity, what that means is that you're not slowing down, it means you're not speeding up, you're not accelerating, it means your final velocity and your initial velocity are the same. Okay, that's what's happening over here. Then it says use suitable calculations to determine which vehicle will reach the signboard first. So essentially what we need to do is we need to work out how long it's going to take for car A to reach the signboard and how long it's going to take for car B. Remember, both cars are 500 meters away. So what we know about car A is the initial velocity. It starts from race. We know acceleration. And we also know the displacement or the distance that it travels is 500 meters so it is very, very important to always list your variables first. So list what you know and then list what you are looking for. So I'm looking for time. Now, I always say to my grade 10s, 11s and 12s that these are the equations of motion. You need three out of the four variables. You need three and we're looking for the missing one. So I'm looking for time. So when we pick an equation, it doesn't make sense to pick this one over here because it doesn't have time. So we're looking for time and then we need three other variables. So I don't have final velocity either. I don't really want to go work it out if I can just go ahead and use this formula. This one is final velocity, so I'm going to avoid that one. This one is final velocity, so I'm going to avoid this one. And I'm going to try and use this one because I have displacement or distance delta x. That's 500 meters. I have initial velocity. I'm looking for time and I have acceleration. So that's my formula of choice. I write the formula down. And remember, these will always be given to you in your exams. You get a mark for your formula. Then we need to substitute the correct values in. So we know that the distance is 500 meters. We know the initial velocity is zero. We are looking for time. We know that acceleration is 1.2 and we are looking for time. Remember, the car is traveling to the right and we chose to the right or east as our positive direction. Remember, it goes N-E, never eat sour worms. And our car is going to the east. Our east is our positive direction. So the 500 is positive. The acceleration is positive. How we solve for this is zero times multiplied by time. That goes to zero. So we've got 500 on this side. On this side, we've got half of 1.2, which is 0.6 multiplied by delta t squared. Our next step, this is multiplied by 0 0.6. We take it over, it becomes divide. We get 833,33. And then remember, we must still square root this number to get delta t time by itself. And for car A, we get 28,87 seconds. We've just done it for car A. We now need to do it for car B. For car B, remember we are told that it is the car traveling at a constant velocity. What that means is that the initial velocity and the final velocity are the same value, which in this case is 27,87 meters per second. 
27,78 meters per second. And constant means that they're the same. The initial velocity will be the same as the final. The car's not speeding down. The car's not slowing up. It also means that acceleration is zero. Remember, if velocity is constant, acceleration is zero. Because we calculate acceleration by doing change in velocity over change in time. And if velocity is constant, that's not changing. So your final minus your initial is zero. And zero divided by time is zero. So acceleration is zero. Again, we also know that the displacement or the distance is 500 meters. So in this case, we actually have quite a few formulas that we can choose from. We could do the exact same formula as we did for car A. And if we substitute in here, this is going to be 500. Initial velocity is 27.78. The time is what we're looking for. Here, acceleration is zero because remember, constant velocity and the time is what we're looking for. If we work that out, this term will go to zero because we're multiplying by zero. So this is going to be zero. And over here, we're going to have 500 and equals 27.78 divided by delta T. So delta T will be equal to 500 divided by 27,78 because the opposite of multiply, which it's this is what's happening over here, we're multiplying, is divide. So we get 17,998 and so on. So if I round that off to two decimal places, which I'm allowed to do, it'll be comma nine nine, but then this eight will turn it into 18 seconds. Another formula that we can use is this formula. And the reason why I can use this one is because my velocity is constant. So 27 comma seven eight, and then my displacement is 500 divided by time. So how you would solve for this is this and this swap places which gets us back to the exact same answer. So the question asks, which vehicle will reach the signboard first? It takes car A 28.87 seconds. It takes car B 18 seconds. That means that car B gets there quicker, gets there in less time. Therefore, car B will reach the signboard first. 4.2 says determine the velocity of car A when it reaches the signboard. Again, we list what we already know. That's what we know already from car A. And we're looking for the velocity when it reaches the signboard. So that's VF. Now we have options with regards to what formula we want to choose because we know the time and we know the distance or displacement. In my personal opinion, I think it would be safer to use the displacement because they gave it to you instead of something you calculated. So I would use this one, but you may use this one as well because we're looking for final velocity and final velocity appears in both of them. Doesn't make sense to use this one because there's no final velocity. You could also use this one. There are your two options. They only gave two options over here. Remember to write your formula first, substitute correctly, and then your answer with unit and direction. Because they want velocity, velocity is a vector, which means you need to give your direction and your answer. If you don't, you won't get your answer mark. This was quite an easy equations of motion exam question. For more difficult questions, check out the playlist link below. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more difficult ones. And also watch other videos in this playlist for other motion in one dimension exam questions and graphs of motion exam questions as well.